What's going on, friends? Logan Myers here from Cinefellas, and I am reviewing Hush. Yes, that's that horror movie that's been on the top 10 uh, films to watch on Netflix right now, and I finally got around to checking it out, and I really enjoyed it. Um, the film is directed by Mike Flanagan. You may be familiar with his work. He directed Oculus, and he is also attached to direct the brand new Halloween film starring our old good friend, Michael Myers. Yes, that film that's going to uh, have John Carpenter back in the seat and helping out with the film and seeing you know, if they can reprise the franchise or bring Mac Michael Myers back to, to what we all know and love, that masked uh, killer that uh, stalks babysitters. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, anyways, but yes, Hush, it's a film about a writer that lives in the middle of nowhere in the woods and she's trying to finish up uh, one of her, her stories and she's trying to come up with the finishing, the ending of, of the book. And she has all these alternate endings and it shows her, you know, in her secluded home, sitting down on her Mac and writing, writing, trying to write the end of the story. But what's different about this film is she is deaf and mute, which is something we don't see a lot. We don't see a person, you know, with a disability that's the main focal point in, in a horror film. Maddie is played by Kate Seagull. No, not Katie Seagull from Sons of Anarchy, Kate Seagull. And the killer, the masked intruder, you can say, is played by John Gallag Gallagher Jr. He was in 10 Cloverfield Lane and some other films. Um, but essentially, yeah, she's in her home. She's writing the story and this guy is stalking her and really playing mind games with her. And which is crazy because you don't, he doesn't really know that she's deaf and mute at first because he's like pounding on the window and like kind of screwing with her and she doesn't notice him. You know, she's in her house on the computer, she's FaceTiming with her friend, and he's just in the background in the window just looking in with that, you know, blank white mask, kind of like Michael Myers' mask. And there was something about the mask, much like Michael Myers' mask, it just kind of creeps me out. It just puts that imprint in you that, that gives you that feeling of uneasiness, and I don't like it. And I think that was brought to the screen perfectly. It really gave that chilling factor to the film that made this killer or psychopath really stand out compared to other films, especially this year. And I think John Gallagher Jr. really portrayed this, this man perfectly. You, you could tell he did his horror movie homework. He wasn't overbearing, he wasn't stupid. He was just good at messing with her and, and messing with Maddie and you know not really going into the house. He would never really try to get into the house. He was just stalking her outside the house through the windows. And there's a few sequences, you know, where Maddie's in the kitchen and he's standing right outside the window and, and she doesn't even notice, you know, because she has this disability, she can't hear anything, she can't talk. So it had that nice, you know, uniqueness and originality to the film that I haven't seen in some time that really made this movie stand out. And another thing, this movie is, is really short, but it gets to the point, you know, some horror films are two hours long. This is an hour and 20 minutes long. And it, it's just enough to keep you on the edge of your seat and, you know, yelling at the TV screen to like, watch out behind you. And it really keeps you involved and it's not too much. It's just the perfect length of a film. And there's another aspect of this film that you don't see as the slasher or the, the you know, the psychopath that's stalking its prey is the guy takes off his mask like 25, 30 minutes into the film. So the second and third act of the film, it's just his normal face, which you don't see, you know, with, with slasher flicks, you know, Michael Myers, you know, never really took off his mask, Jason Voorhees. Um, and that was what, what was different about it. And I did like that. It's, it's the person under the mask that's there and just, you know, really jumping out at you and it really creeped me out. And I thought that was done really, really well. And when Maddie is, you know, gets smart and actually notices that this stalker is outside her house trying to get in, you know, she locks all the doors and she's trying to, you know, stay hidden within her house, turn off all the lights and wait until somebody shows up or he takes off. Um, and eventually Maddie's boyfriend comes to, to find her, to look for her. And the, the stalker, you know, didn't, didn't, doesn't have his mask on and he acts like he's a cop and it was kind of cool, like the, the stalker is using 
some sense here. He, he's using his brains. He's not that stupid stalker that just like, I don't know, and just like tries to kill kill the person. He's he's playing mind games and he's toying with the people that are there to try to you know find out where Maddie is is at. End of the second act to the third act. I mean that's where the more of the action takes place and there's like a bow and arrow and you know there's actually like where the stalker's trying to gets into the house and Maddie's fighting him off and it's pretty grueling and gory in, in that aspect. Um, there's a lot of good practical effects too with like blood and like limbs breaking. There's this one sequence when, when Maddie's hand gets slammed in the door, the glass door, and you see her fingers break. And you're just like, ugh! Like you get that queasy feeling and <clears throat> and that was done really well. Like it was believable. It looked like, you know, she actually broke her hand and she's in pain. She can't scream. She can't scream for people that live, you know, down the way. And it, it gives that factor that, you know, you're alone. You're alone. You're against this this person that's trying to basically kill you. Why he's trying to kill her, we don't know. He just picked a random person. Uh, maybe he found out she was deaf and mute. And maybe it'd be an easy kill. Maybe he's just a psychopath, you know, trying to, to kill some random person. You, you don't know. And that's, you know, another great... Um, aspect of this film is like you, there's a lot of questions they don't answer you know this poor innocent woman you know the the final girl you could call it or the only girl really because she's pretty much the only uh character in the film and you know she gets beat up pretty bad she makes it outside and she's taking on this this guy and they're duking it out and you don't know if she's gonna live you're like is this guy just gonna show up and kill her is she actually going to survive there's just so many unknowns and then it, it finally comes down to the stalker and Maddie um, in the end of the movie, but I won't say what happens, but you just kind of applause it and you're like, yeah, good for you, yeah. But overall, I really enjoyed Hush, you know, for uh, a smaller, low budget uh, horror film. You know, it was well done and Mike Flanagan knows how to make a good horror film. He, you know, he has a lot of throwbacks to 70s and 80s films, but with his own take on it. And, um, you know, Kate Seagal play, uh, plays Maddie and John Gallagher Jr. played the mask uh, stalker. They were, they were really, really convincing. And um, I thought that their acting was, was top notch for, you know, a film like this. And, it, and I can see why this is on the top 10 films to watch on Netflix. I'm glad I finally got around to seeing it. It was different, you know, it, it brings in a person with a disability taking on some psychopath and you know, to see what actually happens when something like that occurs. When it's like a home invasion film, we've all seen those, but this one's different. And it really messes with your mind and it, it keeps you at the edge of your seat. You know, screaming at the TV and you're like, kill that son of a bitch. He's right behind you, you can't hear me, but fucking kill him. <laughs> so I really like that. This is, a, you know, an excellent film and I, I suggest it to all our followers. Um, you know, if you have Netflix, check it out. It's only an hour and 20 minutes. It's an easy watch, but it's also a good watch. You, you know, turn the lights off, you know, sit around with your loved ones and watch a good old horror flick. This is definitely one of the better ones of 2016. And I highly suggest it. I am giving Hush a three and a half out of five hair pieces. <laughs> Until next time, this is Logan Meyer signing out from Cinefellas. Cheese!